My name is Slavka. I'm from Alabama, and this channel is about living, traveling, and learning. See you on the road. What up, boys and girls? I'm sitting here at the Portland area, Aurora, Oregon, just about 30 miles south of downtown Portland. Not good times, man. Not good times to be trucking right now. The rates are complete shit here in I-5 corridor, West Coast. Uh, basically, anything going south towards California is like $1.20 a mile. And then uh, prevailing rates are pretty much up, up and down the corridor is less than $2 a mile. So I've been sitting four days now. Uh, my dispatch did find me a decent load, so we're heading out right now downtown Portland. I'm going to pick up this load of Coca-Cola product and head to Idaho and then... Uh, we have a combination load from there. We're going to go to uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. So, yeah, um, you know, I'm not going to move this truck for anything like that. The, the fuel is $6 a gallon, and uh, the rates are basically paying just, just for fuel. So there's no point in moving a truck. Um, right now, we just sit and try to snipe our good loads. That's about it. All right, let's get going, guys. Here's that famous uh, I-5 bridge in Portland. Why is it famous? I don't know, but there's always usually a lot of traffic on it. Take exit 300 on the right onto Southeast Lampel Street toward Portland Airport. That's where we got to take that exit too. It's the uh, riverside of Portland. You guys remember uh, those riots in 2020 uh, in. Uh, in uh, Portland or the city being burned down every night this is the neighborhood right here I remember coming down here and it was freaking crazy because like one one block they'll be completely full of people and they just kind of like just meandering staring at you and shit you don't know if they're gonna jump on the truck or what uh, you know it's just like this is like an industrial zone slash residential everything kind of mixed in it's crazy weird uh portland like you know you, you have your warehouse and next door there's a espresso bar and then apartment building and you look there's people living on top and then there's commercial so the railroad right here then so yeah this this place was not fun uh during that uh 2020 that that uh before the election just constant riots here every night but uh it's all quiet now kind of goes to show that you know these uh all these rides somebody orders them <laughs> they don't just happen <laughs> just because because where, where did all those people go organizers there's nobody here nobody cares now there's no donald trump to kick out of the office or what's not so yeah all these protests are clearly uh, were uh, organized and paid for by uh, opposition so i never believe any of that shit it's all politics now that we're loaded and heading down beautiful I-84 uh, Columbia River Gorge eastwards, uh, the slow that's due to be delivered Sunday, uh, actually Monday morning. So I have so much time. I'm gonna stop at all my favorite restaurants and casinos along I-84. So the first stop's gonna be the Wind Creek Casino, uh, about 192 miles from here, right about right right before the Cabbage Pass. Um, we're gonna probably st stop there, go get a buffet if it's open, just chill around there and get a shower, and then keep it rolling. Uh, I can, you know, tomorrow we're gonna stop at the Boise uh, stage, stage stop. There's a nice steak, uh, gonna have steak dinner. Then we'll just keep rolling. Sunday we'll get near our delivery and wait till the morning. Some of these loads, you know, they, you don't have a lot of miles. You just kind of stretch it a few hundred miles every day. Try not to uh, get it all done in one day so you're not bored. It's beautiful weather out here. Finally, the rain broke and the uh, sun came out. The Pacific Northwest, is uh, the spring is here. Fresh leaves, just uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful weather. And you smell the fresh air from the mountains. This is uh, 
one of these things you get to experience as a trucker, you know, you get to go to the most beautiful places people have never been to. Well guys, good morning. I'm in uh, Nampa, Idaho, broken down. So yesterday afternoon I was uh, going on I-84 east and uh, that last hill before Ontario, <coughs> Oregon, there's a big hill there before you get in the valley. Suddenly I get this like, all the alarms go off, engines shut down, override, I pull over. Um, didn't see anything wrong as soon as I pulled over. All the warning signs went away. It was some awkward uh, electrical engine fault uh, code. Hooked up my computer, cleared it out. Just kept going because it was just a bad spot in the shoulder off the road. Um, once I got in Idaho, that first rest area I pulled in and I inspected it. And sure enough, this uh, water pump right here is dead. Look at this. This bearing is gone on it. And uh, like right now, it threw the, the belt out, obviously. So I limped it in here, used the APU to generate electricity and pump the coolant because APU has its own separate water pump. It's not enough to keep the engine cold, but if you just slightly limp it, it's enough to not overheat it. Um, I drove like that 30 miles to Nampa, stopped over at the... Uh, Freightliner dealer across the parking lot here and uh, bought new water pump. There it is. These fuckers are $1,100, guys. So, right now I'm waiting for this mechanic guy to come over and help me install it. You can do it yourself, it's not difficult. You got to remove these tubes and all that, but what I don't have on me right now, it would have to drain. The radiator at least halfway it has to be drained below this level that's at least uh, 10 gallons so the guy's gonna bring uh, probably a barrel and a uh, vacuum pump or something we'll just take the coolant out and then he can take care of it because uh, I asked the dealers at the shop there and they're like well we'll you know we, we may look at it Monday or we may not we're busy blah 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 so I started calling around various mechanics the job was simple enough you know you can do it in the parking lot why not so that's what's happening i'll try to film it if the guy's not against it you know the mechanic i'll ask him some people don't like it but you know we'll see how it goes all right guys well we got justin here uh your owner operator of this mobile mechanic service right yes i am i've been in the uh, industry for 14 years I've uh, been trained by some of the best technicians here in Lower Idaho, uh, through Kenworth and Peterbilt. Um, I am Cummins certified, Packard certified. I just decided recently here, about six months ago, I said, you know what, it's uh, it's time to just go out on my own. So here's the truck. Ain't much to it yet, but we're working on it. I work on everything from big trucks to your automotive to uh, the tractors and combines. And, and everything in between. You guys get a lot of agricultural business here, right? We do, this yeah. Area, yeah. Being that we're yeah. we're in the uh, farming area down here, I deal with a lot of a lot of tractors and and uh, a lot of the you know the farming and agricultural side. We do a lot of welding and repair, uh, custom fabrication work. So. Okay. What about truckers like myself? You do like roadside rescues and. I do. As a matter of fact, last week I got a phone call on Easter weekend. Uh, Saturday night at 10 o'clock in the in the evening there. He was broke down about a mile off the Oregon border off Highway 95. Okay, yeah. And, uh, you know, I drove out there. I didn't get home till 3 in the morning on Easter Sunday. But we got him taken care of, too. Like, nothing big. But just I can tell care. you from experience, when something, when, when, when truck starts beeping and codes go out, the blood pressure goes tenfold. And, uh, <laughs> that's yeah. a... Uh, you go from normal to uh, panic mode real quick, so yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people do, and that's, I mean, that's why we do what we do, we do you know. I mean, I, I run 24 hours, 7 days a week because of that reason. I understand that truck drivers keep this nation going. I've had that respect for them for a lot of years, and, you know, I mean, we do our best as mechanics to keep you guys on the road. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. I, I happened to find you just randomly on Google because I, when I, when I had this issue, I stopped the dealer here to buy the part. Mm -hmm. And then I asked them, like, well, can you guys install it? They're like, well, we can maybe see you Monday, but we're busy, you know. 
So that's I started dialing the numbers, and yours was on the uh, Google Maps. You know, just uh, happened to be there. And you yeah, and I, I wanted it to uh, be the first one that populates in the lower area of Idaho. Here, I I take care of all lower Idaho, um, all the way up toward McCall, New Meadows. Um, all the way over into Ontario even. Um, so you have a, like a, a website or a Facebook page or something? I, I have a Facebook page. It's uh, JR Molten Mechanics LLC. Okay. Um, well, guys, we'll have that uh, in, in, the, in the description there below. So um, for you, if yeah. you're in this area, you, you service, you said the Boise area generally? Uh, typically, yeah, I focus on this area, but I do get phone calls for everywhere as far as Idaho Falls. And uh, like I said, all the way into Eastern side of, or yeah, eastern side of Oregon. Um, and I try okay. to take care of everyone I can. Um, just, you know, I mean, I understand we can't all break down in the same spot every time. So right. Yeah. I'll be able to get to you. All right, man. Well, I appreciate your work, and uh, let's get this uh, yeah, shit show on the road because uh, I ain't getting paid while sitting here. <laughs> so. I am. I know. Here's uh Justin Struck here. He's getting uh getting ready to disconnect all the pipes there well guys we got the Justin Rice the GR mobile mechanic out here with us uh, he's gonna be installing this water pump so the first order of business is to drain uh, coolant before anything else comes out that's what uh, Justin's trying to do right now he's trying to find a plug to drain the radiator right now there you go it's starting to drip The bed pump's about to come out. Ooh. Well, at least we're not missing chunks on the inside. Yeah. That's a plus. The impeller looks good. Yeah, everything looks good on the inside. I don't see anything. Now, can you wiggle it? Just. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Look at this play. It ground itself right there. You can see the... the end of the housing. Yep. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, you can see all the clutch material on the inside there. Yeah. Hopefully this pulley is okay. We got to take that off because that's. Yep. We'll find out in here in just a second. We probably lost about two or three gallons. Yeah, puked out the. The housing looks good. See guys, the truck is like a wounded beast. There's a blood flowing everywhere in the parking lot. Wow, well, look at all that ground up chunks of metal. So that's the clutch part right here. That's like aluminum paste. Man, this thing really shredded itself. Look at this, looks shiny and much better now. Hopefully everything runs. So the idea here, you're gonna pull the vacuum and then you're gonna open the valve and draw that from the container, right? Yep, so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna blow air through, air's gonna come out this way, it's gonna create a vacuum inside the cooling system. Oh, Venturi effect. Yep, and yeah. so I'll shut this off and then when I open this valve, it'll suck all the coolant right out of there. And, back and how much coolant. vacuum can that generate? Uh, it, Generates on average to uh, 20 to 21 pounds of mercury. Wow, that's almost near vacuum. Yeah, it's so almost full vacuum. You can do AC system with it. Um, I mean, that's that's about the same amount of vacuum that they run on an AC system. Yeah, it's about 29, 28. That's when you pull them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not quite set up for AC. That's system. amazing. Yeah. So what's the main benefit of the vacuum system versus just pouring it on top? Like, 
I've seen it in every other garage I've been to. Hacking says thing, basically what that does is it'll eliminate the chance of getting air pockets stuck in the system. Plus it allows us to leak test the system prior to filling it up with coolant okay. because as we pull the vacuum and you saw just a second ago, we can yeah, stop the yeah. leaks and we can eliminate those before we put coolant in it. That is a very nifty system. I've honestly never seen this before. I've been in a lot of shops. Uh, it's always from the top and then you wait for it to burp out the yep. little bubbles. And, and this eliminates the whole, the whole process. We don't need yeah. to burp it. It'll, it'll automatically be filled to the brim. No air pockets because what it's doing is it's it's sucking out any air that's in the system at that point. Yeah, no, that's really cool. It's almost like EC system. I worked a little bit on EC system. You pull the vacuum and then you refill with every free drink. Yeah, oh. it's, it's kind of the same process. We so we recovering the coolant that we drained out right now and back into the system. So far so good. The pump is working. We got first hundred miles on it. Seems like uh, temperature is in an ideal zone. Everything's good. We're hauling ass uh, towards Twin Falls, Idaho. And uh, yeah, there it looks good. I'm going to be on time for my delivery, it looks like. If everything remains the same, there's going to be no delays, which is optimal. We kind of, you know, because if I missed the delivery yesterday, uh, I wouldn't have gotten the next pickup that was already scheduled. It'll just cascade it into a bad situation, into a worse. So. All things considered, uh, being able to acquire that pump immediately and then finding a gentleman they could fix it the next morning, um, you know, the situation uh, realized itself in the best way possible, I think. So, well, I thank God and, and all the entities that are trucking gods, you know, whatever you want to worship, uh, so far so good. I'll keep trucking, guys, we'll keep trucking. Now we're in Pocatello, Idaho, kind of the eastern edge of the valley. Uh, further ahead, are, if you keep going east, you'll end up in uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, Grand Teton Range over there, all that good stuff. So uh, this is where our trip final destination is, tomorrow's delivery. For now, we're just going to go find a parking spot and chill there until the morning.